Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Martin and today I'm going to be talking about validation and verification, sometimes referred to in industry as V and V. And instead of uh, recording one longer lecture of 20-25 minutes, what I've decided to do is break it down into three small mini lectures. The first one is going to be on the V diagram and then the definition and process for validation and then verification. The second mini video will be on verification strategy and then finally the third one will be on types of verification and the verification test plan. So here is our typical V diagram uh, that you've seen several times. And again, uh, in the upper left, we talk to the customer about concepts of operation, trying to understand what the customer wants. Then we start generating requirements for the system, the subsystems, uh, the unit and device level. And then we go into the implementation phase for both software and hardware. And then we now start working up the right-hand side of the V where we start testing and this is where we do verification of the device. We do unit device testing, subsystem, and then system. Then at the very end, we do system validation to where we now have the product that we think the customer wanted, and then we you know, now compare it to really what the customer wants, and we now have something to show the customer. So this, this is bookended by validation at the beginning, trying to understand what they want, and at the end, did we do what they wanted? And in between is the is the decomposition of requirements and design and the verification. So what again is validation? So if you look here um, at the start of the product development is the process to ensure the requirements capture what the customer wants. And if you look at this picture underneath, you see a lot of people talking and a lot of people listening intently to someone talking about what they want listening, taking notes, and they're trying to understand and capture what they, what the customer wants. That, that is critical. That's probably one of the most important things in product development is truly listening. Then at the end of the product development, you now have a, you, you now have a product and you now want to do system validation to, to ensure that the system that you've just finished designing and testing yourself performs the intended functions that the customer wanted. So now we have a product in the lower right, and now we're gonna demonstrate it or make sure that we've, that we've met the intended uh, uh, functionality that the customer wanted. So in, so key part is at the very beginning, reviewing requirements, and, and they're the lifeblood of, of the design. So you wanna make sure that the requirements are complete and they're written well enough that a developer, either hardware or software developer, can implement them. You want to make them accurate that where they, you know, correct and they accurately describe the functionality. And then unambiguous, this is important. You only want one interpretation. You want a requirement that is short and succinct enough that if you were to hand it to multiple developers, they would provide you uh, whatever software or hardware design that implemented that requirement. Now, the, how they do it, you know, there's still freedom of design in terms of how they go about it, but what that does is there's no ambiguity with that. And verifiable, the, the, you need to think about it. Can a test be developed that will verify this implementation? A good example would be uh, the system needs to be low power. How do you test that? It's not like you can walk up with a meter and connect it up and say, okay, that's low power. There's like some indication on the meter. No, a, a real requirement would be it has to generate, it has to consume less than 10 watts. That is something that you can walk up to and measure whether or not it, it consumed uh, less than 10 watts. And that's, that's important. And then lastly, implementation free. You want to identify the what, not how. You don't you don't, you're not trying to define how it's to be implemented. You're just telling the, the design team what needs to happen. So in case of a power supply, you could say the input is 12 volts and the output of the power supply is to, to take that 12 volts and generate 5 volt DC and 3.3 volt DC for powering some digital electronics. That is what you want the power supply to do. If you try to define how they're to do it, what type of you know, converter they use or what specific parts, whether it be a Texas Instruments part or analog devices, 
you were now telling them how to do it. And that's not what you want to do as a, you know, as someone writing these requirements. So think about it as what, not how. Now verification, it ensures that the design meets the requirements that have already been validated. So you've, you've talked to the customer, this is what they want, you design it, and now you're going to make sure that the, now you're going to test that design to ensure it's, it meets the requirements that have been agreed to. So again, it happens throughout all levels of integration that we talked about going up that right-hand side of the V. And this is the key part. So validation, you ask yourself, are we designing the right product? Is this the product that the customer wants? Is it the right product? Verification says, are we designing the product right? It's the, I just flipped two words, but they're important in terms of their, in terms of their uh, meaning. Uh, verification now says, okay, we now think we know what the customer wants and we, we think we know what the right product is. Now, have we, are we designing the product right that we agreed to? Key, key point there. So the requirements process looks something like this. Listen to the customer. That's the most, one of the most important things. Generate requirements off of that discussion with the customer. Validate the requirements. Then decompose and disseminate the requirements to the team. And the team can be both developers and the testers. You want independence in your team meaning you don't want the same person testing it who developed it. And then you do verification of the requirements, and then you finalize it and bookend it with validation of the final product. So that's part one of three lectures, and I'll see you in lecture two.